I'm Brad Clayton, PGA of America Master Teaching Professional at the Golf Zone in Oxford, North Carolina, and Sanctuary Golf Club in Beaufort, South Carolina. In 2008, I was very fortunate to be named Carolina's PGA Teacher of the Year, an honor that was truly one of the most humbling experiences of my life. I'm making this presentation to you because I want to do more. Since losing my hand in May of 2000, many people have looked at my accident as one of misfortune. However, in truth, it's been a great blessing for me. It's given me an opportunity to work with and influence people in a way I never thought possible. Simply by trying to overcome and find a way to get better and setting an example that you can do more and you can persevere has hopefully given people an insight to say, hey, maybe I can do more than I thought possible. My opportunity, or my, my arm, that is, is simply a hand, is a visible thing. Many people deal with much more than I do on a daily basis. Mine just happens to be visible. But you can overcome, you can make a difference, and you can find a way. For the last few years, I've been looking for a way to make a difference in more people's lives. And so when I got an email that the Golf Channel was looking for an instructor, this seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to do this. So hopefully with my professional resume and my ability to relate to many different kinds of people in a, in a way that's probably a little bit more uncommon than, than normal, uh, hopefully that makes me a top candidate for this position. Normally when I do my presentations and do my trick shows or uh, presentations for clubs, wounded warriors, whoever I'm doing it for, uh, I have a prosthetic arm that allows me to hit shots and do a trick show and, and demonstrate. But several weeks ago someone stole my car. In it they got my golf clubs, my arm, my teaching aids, my cameras, my computers, the whole nine yards. So I'm not able to use that today, but I don't teach with that arm anyway. So uh, won't make any difference in my demonstrating what I'm going to talk about the golf swing here. It's very difficult for people to actually learn through video and uh, over, the, over the camera because it's hard for the instructor to see or the instructor can't see all the many things that are going on in a golf swing. However, there are some things that you can do yourself that will help you. And I'm pretty sure that if you'll apply these to the best of your ability, you'll see some uh, pretty fun reactions. First thing I like to see is a grip that is a little bit stronger than neutral. I like to see it more on the back side so we can get some back pressure on the golf club and some compression to the golf ball. When you're able to do that and get your hands a little bit in better position, that's going to encourage your body to actually make a more dynamic athletic motion and swing back to the golf ball. So we want to get our, hand, our clubs and more in the fingers so we're on the back side of the club so we can get some pressure on the shaft. A good way to do that is to get your lead hand and hold it down beside your, your hip and let it fall in your fingers. Don't look at it and try to place your hand there, but feel it. Just look straight forward or close your eyes and try to feel it in your fingers with the front edge of the club and the shaft making a straight line. Once you get that, the back hand will just float in and the palm of that hand, kind of hard for me to show you that, but the palm of that hand actually faces parallel to the target line. So you're feeling the club a little more in your fingers. Your foot position, let's get about as wide as your hips and shoulders and relatively straight forward. Posture is going to be nice and tall with a straight back, bent forward with your rear up, arms hang down comfortably, and slightly flex your knees. Ball position, wedges are going to start in the middle. The further forward you go is the longer the golf club. So the longer the golf club, the more up to the end step. Our shoulders, hips, arms, legs, feet, and eyes all want to be parallel to the target line. Since we've gripped the club with the backhand a little low, we're going to have a little bit of a spine tilt. When the ball position's in the middle, as you can see, you're going to have a little spine tilt because the backhand's lower. But the further forward you go, the more spine tilt we'll get in order to maintain a parallel to the target line alignment. If you don't do that and you move forward with your shoulders, you're going to open up and that's going to really encourage a out to end golf swing. So let's really make sure that we get everything parallel to the target line. So first is grip, then foot position, posture, ball position, and alignment. If you can get started properly, that's going to encourage your whole golf swing to move in a better way. One thing that, well, the main thing to me is once you get that set up, that's going to influence uh, the whole sequence of motion is talking about the back leg. Now, the older I get, the less I actually say in a golf lesson and the more streamlined I get because to me, hitting a golf ball straight is just really not that difficult. There's not that much to it and it doesn't have to be that complicated. In my opinion, it's way, way overanalyzed. There's just not that much going on. There's a lot going on, but it's just not that difficult to make the motion work if you have one or two simple things. First being that setup. 
Swing-wise, this back leg is to me, or your back leg, is the most important part of the golf swing in motion. And that is, is that back leg braces. Anytime that knee floats or the leg straightens, you'll tend to let your body lift up in the air. And when that happens, you don't have any motion or any ability to move forward except through effort from the upper body, which to me is going to throw the club straight outside and make it go down and do all kinds of inconsistent things that we don't like. So if you can first get that set up, brace this back leg and turn against that back leg. Just turn as far as your body will allow you. Your flexibility will tell you how far that is. So we want to coil against that back leg and use it as a springboard, as a pushing uh, platform to get you to move forward into a balanced finish position, just like any other dynamic motion you've ever, you've ever made. Any dynamic motion, throwing a ball, even pitching a horseshoe, back leg is always flexed, braced against, and pushed forward up into a balanced finish position. And if you can get that motion going or that leg braced for you, it's amazing what you're able to do as far as getting the club to seek the proper path. Watch any tour and the club goes back inside, outside, long, wrist cocked early, short. It can be in many different places, but it's the ability to coil against that back leg and use that in a way to push forward to get you moving into your front leg so that the shaft will seek the proper path. So it's a coil against that back leg and use that back leg to push forward up into a balanced finish position. Anytime we lose that coil, we're going to have to force the club back down, and that's not going to be a very good way to, uh, to hit consistent, powerful golf shots. So once you've got that club coming from a good path because of that coil and push from the hip, I just call it load and push, up to a bounce finish position, then it's just simply a matter of timing the release of the club face. Your arms rotate the club, and believe me, that's a big speed factor. Um, I found that out over many years of trying to hit a 7-iron 150 yards again that when you lose that ability to rotate the club, it's costing you some speed. So we want to get the club to rotate. It's what the club's designed to do. If you're rotating it too soon, it's going to go left. If you're rotating it properly or at the right time, it's going to go relative to the path you're swinging on. And if it's too late, it's going to cut and go back outside. So the way I like to put it is that your swing path and where you swing the club is going to tell the ball where to start. And where you release the club relative to that path is going to tell it where to end up. So in a nutshell, get that good setup position, turn against a nice braced uh, back leg, use that back leg to push forward up into a balanced finish position, and then time to release. If you can't hold that balanced finish position, then you're out of sequence somewhere, you're swinging too hard. So swing slower, find that speed at which you can do what we're talking about, and then build it up from there. Swing up to about a maximum of 85% something of, of your actual effort. <clears throat> Hopefully, this presentation has once again, or as I mentioned before, has given me an opportunity to say that I truly want to make a bigger impact on people and I want to reach more people, as many as possible. So I would really appreciate your vote. Thank you very much for your help. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at puzzleduckgolf.org. That's P-U-Z-Z-L-E-D-U-C-K-G-O-L-F dot O-R-G. You have to look at the website to see what the heck a puzzle duck is. Thanks for your time and have a great day. I'm Brad Clayton, PGA of America, Master Teaching Professional at the Golf Zone in Oxford, North Carolina, and Sanctuary Golf Club in Beaufort, South Carolina. Here are three things that are going to help you with your putting, no matter what kind of technique you have. doesn't mean that you shouldn't work on your technique, but to me, putting strokes are way overanalyzed. It's the smallest stroke in the golf club, I mean in the game, and also the one with the least amount of motion. So there's no need to overcomplicate that motion. Let's do three things to help you out. First is always commit to the line that you choose. Once you've committed to that line, whether it's right or wrong, at least you'll have an opportunity to make a confident stroke. Second, let's use our eyes in a better way and start to learn to look and curve lines on breaking putts rather than a straight line to the hole. Too many people look too directly at the hole, which will tend to make you play too little break and have to hit the ball too hard to hold the line. So looking curves. Pay attention up here and start looking in this line up here where you have to start it. If it's not correct up here, it's definitely not going to be correct down there. So look in curve lines and trace the line rather than point looks. Third is to approach the ball on that line. Not directly from behind the ball to the hole, but approach the ball on the curve line in which it needs to start. So we're going to approach it on that line, aim the club face first, set up to the club face, trace that line again, make our confident stroke, and I guarantee you that you're going to make more putts. You'll get the ball started on line easier and your distance control will improve.
Thank you for your time and have a great day.